I make handcrafted brooms. It's an old tradition that originally goes back to the Shakers on the East Coast. So we build them in the Shaker tradition, but it's something I just grew up with and learned from my parents. My sister and I have had this shop for 12 and a half years, and that's how long we've run our own business. But before that, I grew up in a broom shop, and I was pretty much always just either playing in the shop or helping in some way as a kid. It really starts with both the fiber and the handle separately. So we have to sort the fiber to different sizes and qualities. We have to soak it in hot water so that we can work with it. And then as far as the handle goes, it's prepping the handle, getting it ready, some sanding, oiling type work. And then once those two things are ready, we can actually build the broom. Basically with that, it's just a matter of pulling very tightly, uh, wrapping it on in layers, and weaving that top stem up the handle. The weave is both decorative and kind of practical because it keeps those stems intact on the fiber. So the fiber is held together by our own binding as well as just the way it grows. There's a lot of folklore about brooms being good luck uh, in association with weddings and housewarmings. In North America, a key one would be during slavery. People who were slaves weren't allowed to marry, and so they would jump the broom as kind of an informal, symbolic way to recognize that coming together. So that is often still used today to kind of pay respects to your ancestors. So these brooms are probably our witchiest, partly because they're the old style, so they have the round, untrimmed ends, and that's kind of what people uh, recognize as your good flying broom. And uh, there's a variety of woods here, but uh, usually just a little bit of that interesting crookedness, features like this one has, just make them a little more spooky and interesting.